Okay, we're down to our last little bit. I've put on my highlights. Um, I mixed some of my paint with some warm white because warm white has raw umber in it. And I made a little lighter value of the blue. And I brushed it on. And then I used my mop to go around the edges to soften it down into the... Um, into the to the toaster. Um, I use the very same mix here. It's not a, an absolute white. It is a, a very light blue and put my um, things on here and for these uh, whitest lights I put I simply put more warm white into it. Okay so um, I've got to put some more brown into these corners. I'm going to turn it my way so I can see it. So I'm just going to add on some more extender. area but I had a lot of extender on my brush. This is not going to soak down into the canvas the same as it did when we first started because I've got my that layer of glaze medium on there. Okay let's start with that half. I'm going to take my large brush and I'm going to put some raw umber out on my palette. got this covering up what's left of my blue. I made way more than I ever would need. So then I'm just going to come into the edge of the paint puddle and start laying on some more of this umber. I'm going to come out a little farther, a little closer to the toaster because I don't really want that halo there. And I'm going to get out my large mop again and I'm going to soften. And I'm going to work my way all around the painting that way. coming up very close with just a very light amount of paint on my brush because see I want these values to go from very dark to light and come right up to the toaster. So this is what I meant by adjusting our background as we go along. Okay. Gonna come up to this corner now. My, my darkest areas I want in the very corners on the very edge of the canvas. My touch gets lighter as I come out. Pull back on the brush and that helps a lot to loosen up my touch. See I'm, I'm taking away that halo that was there but we needed it to be there because we needed light so that we could make this gradation. We could make this gradual fade from dark to light and from light to dark. Okay. Come over and do this side. Now you see the difference? I have I still have that light area, but I don't have a halo. Okay, let's go back to our extender. Make sure that you see. I'll bring my extender right up to the toaster.
Okay. I'll lay on my umber here in the far corners because that's where I want it the darkest. And I, we know that wherever we lay that brush down first is where it's going to be the darkest. Put some up in here on this side. All right, now I'm going to come up, come with my mop brush and come right up to that toaster, smoothing and stretching the, the umber paint. Softening and getting rid of any lines. You know, the extender is just almost magic because it allows you to do almost anything with an acrylic paint that you could do with oil, and it's actually even a little bit easier. I need a little more raw umber paint on my palette. Deposited. Now let's switch over to our mop and bring that number right up to it. really matter if, if uh, we get a little bit into the toaster as long as we just kind of stay right there on the edge because we've got this raw umber in common and we have our turning shadows on the edges. I feel like I'm having a little trouble right there. So let's bring some more paint right there. Pull back on my brush and distribute that paint with a very light touch. Now my uh, mop brush is also getting quite full so I can just take this um, paper towel and pull a lot of that paint and extender out of it and then come back and it'll work a little better for us. Okay. So I hope that this series of videos has been helpful to you on how to paint from a photograph. It's really not very hard at all. All you really need to do is place your values and you can do that by just um, getting a photo, putting it into your computer and taking it all, taking the saturation of color out of it, turning it into a black and white posterized type of photo and then you just trace those lines and put it on your surface and trust yourself. You really can do a lot more than you think you can do without a pattern. You have a pattern, you have your photo, but you don't need, you know, complete, total, step-by-step -step directions. You, you can do this.
still having trouble with that area right there. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it dry down, put another coat of glaze over it so that I don't disturb what I've already done, and then work on this uh, line right here a little bit more. So um, I'd love to uh, answer any questions or any comments that you have, and I hope you enjoyed this. Try it yourself and send me what you do.